Our next guest was in that hearing. Joining us now is Louisiana Senator and Senate Finance Committee member Bill Cassidy. Senator Cassidy, thanks for joining us. Do you also share Senator Lankford's fears that, you know, a bank in Baton Rouge or Shreveport or New Orleans, whatever it may be, may lose business, lose deposits to the Goldman Sachs and Citigroup's and J.P. Morgan's of the world? Absolutely. I've already gotten a word from one of my community bankers that that is the case. Uh, and it makes sense. Um, the Fed has decided that um, I think its policies are encouraging people of high net worth, people who have over $250,000, to move their dollars to a place which is, uh, per the Fed, more secure. Uh, and obviously, that's going to hurt our regional and our community banks. Do you feel that the Treasury Secretary's job is not a direct bank regulator? We know that. That is, that is the Federal Reserve, regionals, national, as well as state organizations. However, one of the Treasury's missions, which is a mission statement that's on their website for the public to see, is to, quote, maintain the integrity of the financial system. Do you feel that Treasury Secretary Yellen is doing a good job? Well, it's hard to separate Secretary Yellen from all the kind of uh, collection of uh, decision makers in this process. So let me just speak more broadly. Uh, I think there is concern that uh, the, that that the, that effectively, effectively, the uh, SVB had deposits up to infinity that were now insured. For those who feel that it's like it's like the it's like capitalism has ended. The federal government has almost nationalized banks. It doesn't matter how the bank conducts itself. It can have the worst management in the world, make the worst decisions in the world. But the depositor who has $5 million is going to have her deposits protected as much as the depositor with $10,000. Now, I'm not quite sure that, that that creates a moral hazard. And I think there is a concern that this administration's policies are creating that moral hazard. Since Sunday night and the, the bailout slash rescue package, whatever you want to call it, was announced, we don't know if it's actually working under the hood. It's not for us to say we don't know. But the stock market, Senator, is acting like it is not. Bank stocks falling today and pretty much every day this week, some by a lot. Why do you think that the stock market or investors clearly don't believe this is working? Well, you can argue that this is because of SBB, the Silicon Valley Bank, or you can argue that it's a response to the fact that we are undoing quantitative easing. We are now in quantitative tightening. And as the money supply is going to continue to contract, and if inflation is not reined in soon, interest rates continue to rise, there's going to be a lot of folks who are whose assets are not adequate to address their obligations as money supply tightens. Now, I think you can draw a line between when things start to get worse for everybody to when quantitative tightening started. That's not to say we shouldn't tighten, but it is to say I think that might be the, the underlying fundamental that's driving a lot of what you just described. All right. Separately, President Biden releasing a pretty hard-hitting statement today in regards to bank executives, writing, quote, when banks fail due to mismanagement and excessive risk-taking, it should be easier for regulators to claw back compensation and to ban executives from working in the banking industry again. So two things here, Senator. Number one, Silicon Valley Bank bought U.S. government debt and mortgages. Do you consider those, quote, risky bets? Obviously, they have what's called duration risk, but do you consider their actual action to be risky? And do you support clawbacks? You got at least two to three things in there. First, it was clear that their assets were inadequate to address their obligations. They weren't risky assets. They were just inadequate in a high inflation, high uh, interest rate environment to meet the obligations they had. This was known. This was known at the end of the last quarter. The regulators didn't know it, but like everybody else knew it, people were tweeting and blogging and uh, uh, shorting the stock because they understood it. Now, it isn't that their investments were not safe. It is that they, they did not pursue an investment strategy adequate for a high interest, uh, high inflation environment. And to that, the board and the um, president of the bank should be held accountable. Next, as regards, should we claw back? If some guy's selling stock two weeks before he goes into receivership, I got to admit that really bugs the heck out of me. Uh, and, uh, and to that mm -hmm. person, uh, I am, I am okay with clawing back. 
he knew last quarter that things were inadequate, did not take the appropriate measures to address it, and he's going to cash in his stock before everybody knows. Lastly, to Biden's point, what about the regulators? If you're going to somehow punish the head of the bank, and yet the regulators should have known that, I mean, people are tweeting about it. Yeah. People are selling the stock short, but the regulators are asleep at the switch. I'd like to see some accountability there, too.